tuning in to the first ever episode of UN Talk. I am so excited. My name is Joe Miwa and right next to me is... Isabel Schutze. Yes, my co-host and on top of being a host, I'm also the creator of UN Talk. Um, you know what? It's been a long time coming, so thank you so much, whether you're listening to us via podcast or you're watching us on NTTV. We are so excited. Building something from the ground up is hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently it is It is not easy. Yeah, you to can't just, just like snap and it comes into existence. You know, I tried doing that. I tried snapping my fingers <laughs> a couple of times and just kind of hoping that it just all magically came together. No. But apparently you have to work for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, that was, you know, it was really, really, really tough uh, getting this together. But I knew I had a vision in mind and I knew how I wanted it to look, how I wanted it to, to execute this whole thing. Um, you and Talk was born a year and a half ago and I knew that the most challenging part about this whole thing was finding you. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I knew that it was going to be difficult finding finding a co-host because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's just there's so many elements that kind of go into to being a, a personality, being mm -hmm. on TV and having that level of, level of confidence. And, and I knew, though, as soon as I saw your audition tape that you were going to be the one. I was like... Isabel, she's mine. I'm calling her right here, right now. I just, <laughs> I just knew it because you just had this level of the, this energy and your perspective, and that's what that was really important to me was having your own perspective. And mm -hmm. I knew that, you know, through your through the questions that I asked you. Um, do you even remember like what those questions were? I remember a couple of them. Yeah, but political, yes. <laughs> yeah, but it was political because on purpose because yeah. I wanted to see what your reaction and what your response was mm -hmm. was to those questions. So, so I knew I knew that you were going to be the one. Um, but you know, why did you? audition for you and Todd what drew you to it so I'm a freshman so it's my first experience at NTTV and I actually met you at the kickoff party that we did where we listened right. to what all the shows were and what we wanted to be on what we wanted to audition for right and honestly you got up there and we're just so real about how hard it had been to build this and how much work you'd put into it and how it was a startup and really that's what drew me to it was I wanted to be a part of a show that I believed in and my co-workers and my crew believed in yeah and it was a show that had no boundaries. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm just so excited to be here right now, I mean, to be on the show. I, I mean, you, well, first of all, thank you so much for, for believing in you and talk and for all of you who are listening and supporting us, thank you so much for, for allowing us to bring you this kind of content. Um, and that's the thing is you, you mentioned something that was, that's really important to mm -hmm. me is, is, is believing in something. Um, you know, a lot of the times we don't know how to get there. You know, it's difficult. It's one thing when you have this idea, but to execute it and, and believe in it and really just go through it, it's a difficult thing. But we wouldn't be in this position if it weren't for, for people like our professors, mm -hmm. you know, who kind of bring that energy and that confidence outside of us because a lot of the times we're just so scared to do it. Yeah. And I knew that going into the first episode that I wanted to dedicate our first episode to our professors. And, and the first person that I thought about who would be like an excellent person to have on the mm -hmm. show was Michelle Redman. And I don't know if you guys know who Michelle Redman is, but for those of you who have never had the privilege of having her, she is a producer, she's a writer, she's a director and a documentarian, but overall she's a professor. And that is the reason why I wanted you here because I mean, come on. Everyone knows you're a legend, <laughs> and if you don't know, you're about to hear the legend. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle, oh, for joining you. us on My the goodness, first I, episode of I, You and Talk. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so honored that, A, it's your premiere episode, and that you would ask me to, um, to join you. I mean, most people would say, oh my gosh, can I get away from my professor? And here you're asking me to come, so. <laughs> come back, that's come huge. back. Yes, that's huge, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I was never actually lucky enough to have you as a professor, but I was reading up on your career and you know, reading up just for this interview, and I was so interested in how you got into this career and how you got into, the, like, into television in the first place. So if you don't mind telling me a little bit about that. Um, getting into television in the first place, well, uh, my uh, undergraduate degree, um, it was called, instead of broadcasting, uh, it was called speech communication with an emphasis in television. So I interned at various television stations, but um, people seemed to really gravitate towards my voice, mm -hmm. having me narrate things all the time, and then writing was a, such a passion for me, even though 
broadcast writing is different than print, mm -hmm. I uh, really enjoyed just the idea of digging into a story. And I had a great mentor, um, Sister Melanie. I went to a Catholic girls' um, college. And Sister Melanie was uh, a huge influence, and she's written several books. And in fact, I've gone to visit her to let her know what's, um, what I'm doing, how far I've come along in my career. Um, but it was important that uh, I please her and make her um, happy about mm -hmm. my writing work. So I transitioned from there, and especially having intern experience, uh, and just, um, gosh, I'm trying to think, I went to, grad school in Boston um, and then eventually made my way to Texas and got a, my first job as a production assistant here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market um, at Channel 13 making $9,000 a year. Wow. 9000 with okay. overtime. Yes, oh with gosh. overtime. Yes, I, wow. I did. But within that one year, I went from a production assistant to an associate producer. Oh my gosh. So obviously I impressed somebody somewhere. You did something um, right. <laughs> I, did, I did something right. Yeah. And, um, and then from there, the rest is history in terms of local work. Uh, I worked um, at a local independent station doing news uh, and public affairs talk show work. Uh, and then eventually I just realized I needed to leave this market to go to a smaller market to get more experience and then come back to a bigger market. Mm -hmm. So I sort of did it, you know, in the reverse. Yeah. Usually you go to a small market mm -hmm. and then go to a larger market. So I went to a smaller market, Charleston, South Carolina, as the morning anchor and reporter and did that and then came back to Dallas and mm -hmm. Albuquerque later and so yeah. forth. But just lots of stuff on my resume. Well, yeah, I mean, there really is. I mean, <laughs> Isabel's right to bring that up, looking back at everything that you've done and where you're at now. Uh, I mean, it's just, you have so much experience and we were, you know, again, you know, looking at everything you've done as, you know, because we knew you were gonna come on the show. There was just a couple of things that really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. Specifically, one that I really wanted to, to touch on because you happened to, I think, work there when a certain someone in a very high office today uh, used to used to run. So I'm talking about, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you were a segment producer for Miss USA Pageant, yes. which meant you work for NBC and Miss yes. Universe Pageant Productions. Yeah, yes. Can you tell us, first of all, how did you even, like pageants? Well, Michelle Redman? I, I mean, you're, I, yeah, it was how did really, that even happen? It was really just one of those, oh gosh. Um, but there was a writer's strike at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, that strike just went on and on. And so scripted producers working for shows like medical, um, uh, uh, not medical talk shows, but medical dramas mm -hmm. or some other kind of drama, those are scripted producers. I was an unscripted TV producer, but okay. they were taking our jobs during the strike. Okay. So mm -hmm. I came, came across this. Um, Miss USA pageant in Las Vegas, three weeks, and, and I think, um, I can't remember, it was quite a bit of money, so I was like, oh, that'll help. And uh, <laughs> so I had to live in Las Vegas for three weeks, and I, I was tasked with segment producing, uh, but I also had to interview each of the 51 mm -hmm. contestants which was really interesting, um, the stories <laughs> that they would say. Um, and one particular, well, it was, um, I th guess, well, I guess it was the day before the, the finals, you know, on NBC, mm -hmm. when Donald Trump uh, walked into the, um, not makeup room, um, dressing room, dressing room, mm -hmm. unannounced. Wow. Yeah. People were in all states of undress. Yeah. And there he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just remember <laughs> looking at him going, Oh my God! I, you know, so everyone's right. like, mm -hmm. everyone's like, ah, yeah, cover up, yeah, cover it was, up. It was crazy. That um, is, yeah, he, that is. he he just said, you know, here I am, yeah. oh my and God. walked wow. around. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, and speaking of that, I was just um, as being a woman going into this career, mm -hmm. I was wondering how that's been for you, and if there's been any challenges with that. Or but what being anything? a woman? Yes, yeah, in this field, just in I this guess. career. Yeah. Great question. Uh, um, I've had people ask me, um, how do you manage a career like this with children? I don't have children. Yeah. It, you know, I don't have, to, I have a four-legged furry baby. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I wouldn't, if I had had children, I wouldn't have been able to do as much as I've done because mm -hmm. I, you know, I needed to provide a stable environment for um, my child. So for me, it was, I, you know, I was married to a man who said, just go for it. You know, wherever yeah. you want to go, just go for it. 
So that was helpful. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I didn't marry uh, someone who said, you know, where's my dinner at six o'clock? Yeah. I'd be like, you know, I don't know, where, you know, where are you? Um, but for those who want a stable family life in this kind of career, they, it's oil and water, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, as often as I was on the road um, getting an assignment. When I worked for the Oprah Winfrey show, they'd call on a, a Wednesday, say for example, and as mm -hmm. soon as they'd call, I'd say, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Well, tomorrow you're going to Hawaii, or tomorrow you're going to Oregon. Okay, no problem. Yeah. And you just had to be yeah. ready. You to, just had to be ready yeah. to yeah. go. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, you know, like you mentioned, the Oprah Winfrey show, which was, which was my next question. How was it? Ex how was that experience working for such a, you know, like really major show? Oh, I mean, yeah. the Oprah Winfrey show is a big deal. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I met Oprah a couple of times, and when I was a reporter, you I met interviewed Oprah? her. Oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just take a moment? Uh, take <laughs> like a that, that. Yes, that is that amazing. In. Wow. Yes, I've met how her was, a couple you, of times. Okay, you have to tell okay. us how that was. How was it that first time you met Oprah? Well, I mean, she's a goddess. I mean, she, and she knows it. A goddess you know and I mean? a legend. Uh, yeah. I mean, can you believe oh, two in a row? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, she knows. Well, back when I interviewed her, uh, this was earlier on um, as the show was just really skyrocketing. And then I, <laughs> one day I was flown to, from Dallas to Chicago mm -hmm. they, because they wanted to interview me for a full-time job at, out of Chicago. Okay. So I was sitting in the kitchen and this woman in a brown um, tracksuit walks in and I wasn't paying any attention and it was Oprah and I look up and she goes, hey, and I went, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> The Just only sitting person here. I can say that yeah. to Oprah. Hey. Yeah, and oh she got gosh. a yogurt yeah. out of the refrigerator and walked wow. <laughs> walked away. Um, That's amazing. But y y she was, you know, normal. But she, you know, she is a goddess she of is. all Isn't television. That weird. I mean, you look at people like that who are just they have this high level of publicity and just oh, this yeah. public figure and just this level of, yeah. of of demanding the room and yet she still managed to <laughs> yeah. sneak past you. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> she just, I mean, I'm literally, I was in there by myself. I was just waiting for my That's interview amazing. time and That's she was amazing. coming in for yogurt. <laughs> so yeah. she goes, hey, hey. <laughs> so w what was your first job with them? Uh, I think my first job was one of those, what do you want to ask Oprah? So I had to run around uh, I think we were in Dallas. I had to run around asking people, like man on the street mm -hmm, interviews, mm -hmm. what what would you like to ask Oprah? What would you like to ask Oprah? Kind oh, of thing. Cool. And then as time went on, um, I had other segments, like I did the Will Smith segment in, in Hawaii. Right, I really did yeah. go to Hawaii and spend the day with Will Smith, Another which was a lot of fun. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I he's, mean, he's super. He's great. It's insane. Amazing. Um, and he's so like regular he's so yeah. normal but he's so funny yeah uh then um kevin cosner went to kevin cosner's house and kind of hung out um with kevin just um, casually me, hanging out with all these kevin celebrities yeah. kevin that's with cool kev, it's fine but it, you know it was a great experience there's a lot of pressure however because that show uh demands a lot from everyone working mm. in all the facets so sometimes right. i might have five producers calling me at various times before i even get out the door Okay. Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. Don't forget. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, because they're under so much pressure. Right. Uh, so, you know, it, it was a great experience and I did it for 10 years. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's something I'll never forget. But it helped me in other um, areas where I knew I had to get certain things done in a certain amount of time, not um, risk overtime and really mm -hmm. time manage. You right. had to really time manage with Oprah projects. Yeah. So were you wanting to work on, because I know those are like talk shows and stuff mm. like that, were you wanting to work on things like that or were you headed for a different place in television? Well, I started out being on camera, well mm -hmm. I started out as the production yeah. assistant, but eventually I was convinced or people convinced me that I needed to be on camera. Okay, fine. So <laughs> I did that, but I just wasn't happy being mm -hmm. on camera. I, you know, I really didn't care about, you know, what color lipstick I had on, uh, they just kind of got in the way of telling the story for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, being a producer and a writer really was my ticket. I yeah. mean, that's where the power is. So You thrive the most I, I that. Yeah, I, I enjoy making you look good. So that's my, um, oh, that, it's just my, my sense of accomplishment. If yeah. I make sure you look good, then I look good, yeah. even though I'm behind the scenes. I don't have to be seen. 
So what you're saying is you're going to come on you and talk, and you're going to be <laughs> our executive producer. Yes. Mm -hmm. and yes. And you're going to. Okay, and I got will it. make sure. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Make us look great. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. That's that's what a producer does. Yeah. yeah. No. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, it, I think you know you mentioned that, and and our. Uh, producers also um, Delaney she does an amazing job I mean she's really just been such a valuable asset so I, I see that being mm -hmm. you know such an important role and so I could I totally understand why you would you know think of this as being you know wow like this is I'm helping these people yes you know and but I think what makes it work best for me is mm -hmm. because I have been on camera um, a talent, reporter yeah. talent yes yeah. I have an idea or I know the language to help make the on-camera talent relax mm -hmm. and feel good about what they're doing and not fall into a nervous, you know, fit. Yeah. So having been there, it's like I know what to say to help you calm down to, to be your best. So mm -hmm. I think that was, well, I know it was to my advantage. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, so you've done, so, you know, you've had the opportunity to really just work for such ama amazing, you know, programs and television shows, um, one of them being National Geographic Channel, which I also think is really amazing. Um, so I, I think about it and I'm like, well, first of all, who wouldn't want to work for, yes. I mean, National yes. Geographic and having that on your resume Geo. is yeah. like uh, phenomenal. It's everything you can think of and then some. Yeah. Everything yeah. you can think of. Just imagine working at a place where part of the building, one of the buildings you work, is part is also a museum where people are coming in to see wow. stuff that's on display yeah. at your workplace. I that's mean, amazing. how cool is that? That is really but, great. Uh, for example, working in Nat Geo, let's say you have a trip to Africa coming mm -hmm. up. You go through the tunnel to the middle bu building, and there's mm -hmm. the nurse. And she'll say, all right, where are you going? Uh, Uganda. Okay, you're going to need this penicillin. You're going to need this, these pills, these, mm, you know, okay. whatever. And so <laughs> you walk away with your dispensary, yeah. you know, your pharmaceutical uh, bag. And so you know what your protocol oh is before you, you even <laughs> leave the building. Yeah, yeah that is that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, you did all these things. So uh, I guess, you know, my, uh, we, you know, we talked about your career, but now mm. I really want to know what, uh, what drove you to become a professor. <laughs> I mean, that was I the needed to be question. with Joel. <laughs> um, what drove me? Well, I enjoy mentoring. I enjoy yeah. um, sharing stories. You know, having had my cl two classes, I've got a story for every day of the week. I, you know, yes. I, I, I you know, certainly was entertaining. Stories. Absolutely. Yes. yes, I've got a story. <laughs> Never I, a dull I, I was moment. always like, you know, which reminds me of the time. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, but actually, I. Um, found, and it was just the nature of the business, more and more large companies like Discovery and National Geographic and mm -hmm. Travel Channel and so forth were laying off people because they didn't want to have to pay medical benefits. Okay. And in doing that, you could work there, but only under contract, and you'd have mm -hmm. to pay your own medical bennies. Yeah. So I thought, oh, wow, this is not expected. So I went back to finish up my master's degree, and I got an MFA at SMU sounds like um, alphabet, MFA at SMU <laughs> in cinema television. And with that in hand, I knew I could teach and not be uh, at the whim of a corporation that says, oh, wow, too bad, so sad. Mm. You know, we're going to lay you off um, because of medical benefits. So I decided to do that and uh, dip my toe in the water as an adjunct for a journalism class. And I thought, oh, I kind of like this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then that led to full-time work and then um, being promoted to a senior lecturer. And then when I left the journalism school, I thought I was done uh, with UNT until Media Arts called and said, <laughs> not so fast. <laughs> and that's where you met me and I was right. here for two years. Yeah. So I, I kind of backed into it. I didn't anticipate being a professor. Okay. But since I always enjoyed mentoring, I enjoyed sharing, I enjoyed helping up the next um, person, especially women. Uh, it was a natural fit. I right. really enjoyed it. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, um, I don't know if you, I mean, you're, you're a freshman this, yes. this year, so, you know, this is your first time, but I've had, uh, you know, quite a, uh, quite a bit of experience with different professors and teachers and, yeah. you know, a bunch of them, I mean, they're here to teach and, you know, but I've noticed that specifically, you know, with the, with the media arts or converged broadcast media mm -hmm. teachers, there's, it's just, it becomes more than just like teaching you how to do this or that. It, it becomes like, like, in, like you said, mentoring. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's another level of teaching, yeah. which I feel like, yes. um, it, you know, really just 
defines this program, you know, and that's, and that's yeah, where that's you come true. in. Yeah, I mean, I really, honestly, when you were when you were my teacher, it it was like it was a whole <laughs> other ball game. Like you really, truly, I mean, you were so blunt in the way that you said things, but you said it because you knew that you, we could do better. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and Remember I think my speech about mediocrity. Yes, I do. I've had people it, send me notes about, the, I'll always remember you, Professor, because you do not accept mediocrity. mediocrity yeah. Why would I? Yeah. I mean, look where I've been, look what I've done. I couldn't have done any of that if I was mediocre, if mm -hmm. I was just like, eh, mm -hmm. laissez-faire, whatever. No, 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 no. Right. Raise the game, meet your competition, and then go above. Mm -hmm. So I don't accept mediocrity. I just don't. Yeah. But I don't try, I, I try not to be harsh, but... Um, you but do? I, yeah, I try. <laughs> but I'm very determined that if I get a sense that you can do better, yeah. I expect better. Right. You should expect better. Yeah. Because this particular field, when it comes to the competition you face, is just, yeah, it's, it's enormous. Brutal. It's yeah. brutal. Yeah. You know, L.A. eats their young. I mean, come on. Yeah. So if you can't get past me, you're right. never going to make it. Yeah. I mean, really. If you can't, if you... You know, want to curl up in a ball because you've had a Redmond class? Please. <laughs> you know. Okay, how does it feel listening yeah. to that? Well, it's I mean. actually kind of interesting because the f even from the short time that I've like been involved in this program, that's the thing that I love most about it is because always I always say this is like as long as you care about something yes. and you're willing to work for it, yes. mm -hmm. that is all you need in life. And yeah. I like especially going into this program, mm -hmm. this is one of the first times that I've had a program where every single person is working so hard to get to the next level. Good. And I think that's so amazing. You have to. Yeah. yeah. You have to. Uh, having worked in LA three different times, worked on the East Coast two different times, and then of course in the Dallas Fort Worth market and these other, uh, a few uh, smaller markets, I know for a fact there are, for every opening, there's 15 billion people and you've got to stand out. Yeah. My business card when I was in LA had a caricature of my face so that when I left you the card, you, you will see the face and go, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, her. I mean, anything to yeah. make yourself mm -hmm. stand out, whatever it takes uh, to some extent, you've got to be ready. And yeah. it, it's none of this nine to five or, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I need to go. No, 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 no. You have to be willing so, to give it all. Yeah. You have to. No, really. And um, I mean, that's what she taught us. Uh, in class was, you know, I'm so, ugh, I wish you really would have had that opportunity. <laughs> I mean, she, the reason why she was so impactful specifically t for me was because, you know, I had, like I've said, I've taken so many classes, mm -hmm. but, you know, mm -hmm. when I took your class specifically, it really just drew this next level energy out of me. Good. Um, and it was because Thank of the you. way that you chose to conduct your classes. Thank I you. mean, you were, you were straight to the point. You weren't um, sugarcoating anything. You were just like, hey, this is what you need to do better. This is what, yes. what is expected outside of this classroom for you to be able to succeed, yes. succeed mm -hmm. in this kind of career, this kind of environment. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, you really drew that outside of your students and, and oh, you drove that, you. that level of confidence that we made we may or may not have had, but oh, I mean, you just took you. it to a next level. I so, I appreciate so that. really, I mean, uh, if I, I mean, kudos. I just and see, he's already been graded, so this really <laughs> comes from There's the heart. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's and a I, reason for him to be saying it. No, no, seriously, no. <laughs> I remember. I don't know if you remember the conversation we had, but I was just so scared to ask Michelle to be on the show because I was like, <laughs> um, so she's going to expect this oh and this and this gosh. and this. So we got to make sure that we're on top Everything of our game. Everything has to be perfect. Um, of course, nothing ever goes as planned, but I mean, that's it's okay. all a learning experience and that's what you I, taught us. Thank you. I, I will share one thing that I, it was shared with me when I was in grad school and I share it with you as just as a reminder and I think that's sort of my philosophy is there are no excuses in television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, mom and pop at home don't care that your car broke down and you couldn't get to the station. Right. Mom and pop don't care that there's ice on the road and you're afraid mm -hmm. to drive. Mom and pop want to see what they want to see mm -hmm. when they want to see it. So there are no excuses in television. Yeah. So what might be mud in my wings, too bad, so sad. You have got to just push through it if you want a career in this kind of work. Yeah. You yeah. just have to do that. I remember being on radio with laryngitis, waiting for my program oh my director to say, oh enough already. Guess what? He didn't. 
So oh. I was creaking and you know wheezing and no. So there I was on the air, um, but oh I didn't gosh. get a day off. I mean, I didn't yeah. get to go home sick. Yeah. Nope. 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 Wow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> do, so I mean, uh, clearly, so that's what that's what her class was all about was prepping you for mm -hmm. those kinds of situations. Because yeah. I mean, situations. we did so many different yeah. kind of exercises um, in your class, and I found them all to be very useful. Uh, specifically, like the one about um, I think you know being projecting that confidence in yes. your voice yes. Yes. and, yes. you know, kind of, you know, exerting that out, you know, and I think that, you know, even though you may feel like you have it, it's mm -hmm. like, well, do you have it? But for like television yes. <laughs> or true. radio, yeah. you know, there's a different kind of, it's a different level. And, and that's mm -hmm. what was so great about your class. So, thank um, you. yeah, no, honestly, uh, thank you again for, for being here. Cause, um, it, there's so much, um, so many things that you've done, so many, um, people whose lives you touched and changed oh. because of of your class uh, and I really hope you know that so I mean this <laughs> right here all of this you know it's it's tough but when you think about all those things that you've mm. learned you remember I can do it like I can do it well I imagine one day I'm gonna sit in a rocking chair <laughs> and I I've, I've started to collect these wonderful notes from former students and I just imagine myself kind of rocking there oh. and reading them and some oh. of them I know will bring me to tears but some of them are you know they're just amazing because for me I have no idea how I'm reaching you or if mm. I'm reaching you mm -hmm. I just know what I know yeah. and I teach what I know it's not out of a book necessarily it's the book and me right. me and the book yeah. So I just imagine one day just sort of rocking there and going, oh, <laughs> this note from Joel. You will <laughs> finally rest. You won't be working one day. I, I know, right? What? Well, first, that's no. the biggest mystery <laughs> out of this whole uh, story. So, no, um, what were your thoughts when I reached out to you for the show? What, I mean, I... Uh, I didn't give it a second thought. If Joel wants me, needs me, <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, you know, I didn't, you know... TV doesn't scare me, so yeah. I. That I makes just, one of us. Well, well, actually, he, <laughs> he did say podcast, so I'm thinking, oh, okay, yeah. so I can just. You That's know. true. Yes. And then he said, but you'll be on camera. Oh, jeez, huh. I've got to get camera ready. Oh. Dang it! Yeah, no, but um, again, thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. You're you so ha welcome. You are just a legend, as I've said many, many times. <laughs> no, no, um, no, no. But we like to finish off um, our episode, or okay. we're gonna, because this is our first episode. That's right. <laughs> Forget about that. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to finish off our episode with um, two questions that okay. are in this bowl. And really, it's their mm. questions from students that you've had in the past who are, oh. um, who just admire you in the same way and just wanted to make it a little bit fun, spice well, things well. up a little bit. So, okay. so just pull a question just pull, out. Yeah, just pull okay. two. Okay. Oh, pull two. Yes. Okay. There's one, and then there's two. Okay. Hopefully, they're not the same question. <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce, homecoming. Did you see it? And what did you think? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my God. You can see I Preston who, in the yes. room right now. Preston, He's freaking out. This is so here. Preston works on the show for <laughs> those who don't know, and he is. He's wearing yeah. a Destiny's Child shirt. Now, Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, if that tells now, you anything. In one of my stories, <laughs> I told the class, and Preston almost passed out that I met oh, Beyonce yes. uh, and Destiny's Child. Yes. I assume I that one, that question's yes, from Preston probably. <laughs> I was, um, the show that they were on, I was executive producing and it was their first TV show. Oh and God. Beyonce wow. so came, still came unknown. up to me and said, thank you so much for having us on. And I said, oh, you're, it, listen to me, you're great. I think you're going to do really well. <laughs> Yeah, I said that to her. And oh they all gosh. signed this this 8 by 10 picture, and I don't know where it is. I have no idea where it is. Oh. I've moved too many times. Oh, but no. she actually said, you know, thank you. This was our first TV show. And I said, oh, I think you guys are going to really do well. <laughs> God, I'm so embarrassed. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. wonder what she's doing now. Oh, my You've gosh. done it all. What job would you love to go back to and why? Well, nothing beats being a National Geographic producer when you're on a camel in the outback and it's 120 degrees, you're sleeping um, under wow. the southern hemisphere stars, oh wow. or you're in a submarine that you've learned how to operate within 15 minutes, or let's see, um, <laughs> you're um, uh, at Yellowstone and you're um, with scientists who are observing wolves and yeah, it was, it was a wolf uh, survey. Um, or dealing with bison, 
Uh, yeah, um, nothing beats um, so or, that. or or a um, uh, a place um, ancestral Puebloan place in Mesa Verde, Colorado, that had not been excavated. So the people who lived there the thousands of years ago, the pottery shards were still on the ground, and oh I was just sort of standing there going, oh, wow. That's amazing. So, so, that's so cool. National Geographic yeah. it is then. <laughs> yeah, it well, um, thank you guys for tuning in to UN Talks first ever episode. Again, I'm your host, Joel Miwa, and I'm... I'm Isabel Schutze. Yes, and thank you, Michelle Redman, you are for so being welcome. here. Thank I you. mean, what an honor it was, um, and there's more to come. So <laughs> you might come back, you oh. may come back, or I promise. I'll give more stories. Once, we're, once we get nominated oh, okay. for an Emmy, hopefully. <gasps> So we'll cool. see. We'll see. We'll see. But thank you guys so much for tuning in.